Hi, Paul here from Spitfire. I'm here with Christian today to talk to you about eDNA Earth, about the conception of the project and how we built it, but also all of the things that Earth is particularly useful for. Yeah, I think that you and I had kind of separately discovered that when you're mixing orchestral sounds with synthetic sounds, that if it has an organic beginning, they're kind of easier to combine. You did some experiments with our first harp, harp library. You did this yeah. thing with harpospheres. Yes. Basically, w when we divvied up the workload for Albion, you took the orchestral side of things, and I did the synthy stuff, the Stevenson's uh, part of, of Albion, which are taking orchestral elements and morphing them and creating kind of synth presets from it. I don't know if I kind of understand why stuff that is organic at origin but sounds synthetic mixes better with orchestral or, or live elements. I don't know if you have any thoughts. I have a theory about that and um, I think that it's about having depth in the sound as opposed to um, a slightly two-dimensional sound. And I don't necessarily mean because uh, you can get a, a synth sound that s appears to have a, a depth in the sound stage, but there's something about a sound recorded in space, in a space, yeah. that has a kind of spatial depth. A lot of the Quincy Jones, a lot of the Michael Jackson uh, albums, the synths were, were kind of played out into the room mm -hmm. and then reamped, basically, to, in order to get that kind of sonic depth to the sound. And I think what we've done by starting with a sound recorded in, in a 3D space and then kind of imposing a synthetic texture onto it, is we've retained that depth right. within, the, th within the sound. I never thought of it that way. So I think that basically our ambition was we were sitting on this huge kind of IP base of these, like, so many years of orchestral samples, was to, to create, you know, a really rich encyclopedia of cinematic synth sounds. And we'd been using, and we're real fans of a couple of um, commercial, you know, plugins that were around, I, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago. Mm. And we, we, we just had kind of the odd frustration with these things. It was kind of lack of choice of sound. So you'd, you'd find a really good sound and then you'd hear it on a personal ad yeah. that, that <laughs> evening. That sounds contained too many notes, so they were like chords, which was great for if you were sitting on one note, but the minute you shift, the kind of harmonics didn't, didn't work. Yeah. And that things like were unmanageable, had to, the tails were too long, that kind of stuff. So that was yeah. our brief to ourselves. Yes, to try and create stuff that, um, that we, that's usable. Absolutely. In, yeah. And I guess something that you can use almost in, you know, use your orchestral chops, but create you know, uh, synthscapes that kind of mix together with the orchestra. I guess it's, you know, admiring the work of Hans Zimmer and that kind of hybrid area, but also being massive fans of the original Blade Runner score, which was approached, it was synthetic, but it was approached from an orchestral arrangement kind of POV. So we've updated uh, eDNA and uh, the sounds are a lot easier to, to browse. Uh, it's now NKS compatible, and I'm actually working on a, a new cartridge at the moment, which is you know, I'm quite excited about it. It's always a real joy to work with Earth. So if we go in here, we've prepared some sounds. I think it might be nice just to, to show what the kind of a sampled string sound that has been morphed into a synthetic sound, what that kind of sounds like. And we've got this uh, sound here, the enormous pad. Way to being a live string band, but I don't suppose you do me a favor if you just slowly. There's all sorts of funky tuning stuff, and it really definitely becomes a much more synthetic sound. I think it's, is it, is it live strings, it is, a, is it a synth? And then be, to be able to morph into something that is clearly, maybe would be great on thrillers, horrors, that kind of stuff, but with the kind of cinematic usage in mind. So that's one example. So, and you're quite a big fan of the Stranger Things yeah. stuff as yeah. well. And we've got some stuff in here that will enable you to get in that kind of style. Absolutely. Although, inter although made from... Original, I think this might have been like so. things like <laughs> bassoons and stuff. Yeah. So 
again, it starts, you know, this sound, when you push the mod wheel up, it's kind of quite analogy sounding almost. When you push it down. And it goes from analog into something that is maybe a bit more cinematic, lots of fun. Referring back to the problems that we were having with those commercially available synths was this kind of the lack of choice. So one of the ambitions with this was to just do piles, an encyclopedia of stuff, and sometimes the, the differences between the patches are subtle, sometimes they're more dramatic. But our hope was, I think it's like 2,000 sounds? Yeah, yeah, so there's 1,001 presets, but there are... 2,000 uh, raw sounds in there that you can make. There are, you can also design your own sounds Absolutely. as well. So you can take any of the sounds, obviously, as a starting point, and there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do with the engine to transform the sounds Absolutely. as well. Um, but, but also, uh, you, can, you can really start from scratch and kind of roll your own. Because that's our kind of major fear of using commercial libraries, is, is you use something that then someone else uses and can be mm. kind of iconic within their score. Yeah. So the sheer choice enables you to really find something that's kind of just really fits in with the feel of the piece that you're writing and, and what you're working to, but also the, the, uh, the tweakability is, is mental. Yeah, you can make something dramatically different sounding in seconds. I think one of the most powerful aspects of this is the ability to really automate absolutely any of these parameters. So most sounds uh, are made up of two kind of source waves, if you like. You can switch fade between them, but also alter the character of those sounds independently of each other. And then we've got stuff like gate sequences. And what I've done with a whole bunch of patches that I've designed is um, sounds that change incredibly when you move the modulation wheel. So if you see this, there's all sorts of stuff going on there when I move that. So if we have a listen. See, for, for me, that's, you know, it's, it's designing synth sounds with kind of drama use in mind. Mm. And that, the thing we have when writing to picture is stuff gradually changing. Now, when you're writing a track, it tends to be on a, you know, on one level or, it's, you know, it's your kind of verse and your chorus and your middle eight. But with drama music, you need to alter with the, the mood. And I think that's kind of, you could imagine, I don't know, a chase or something. A bit of jeopardy. And that's, I guess, one of the real strengths of writing to picture and getting people to write to picture is the ability to change subtly in, in nuanced manners or dramatically like that with the picture. So that's, um, I don't know, a demonstration of, of, of the GUI in action and how these, these transformations I think are quite a powerful aspect of, of the library and very fun to program. But there's a real mixture of sounds as well, and I, I love the kind of, I don't know, I always imagine is, is it a synth sound that Tom York would like? And there's lots of kind of stuff that I would say is slightly more indie-led. Just kind of massive cinematic stuff. Again, it's kind of slightly more edgy, dare I say, it, British sounding stuff. Yeah. Who would we say that this is primarily useful for? I mean, I can see you've just mentioned uses in TV and film, mm -hmm. obvious things, games, of course, as well. Yeah. What about beyond that? What do you see the. Um... Well, I just think we're coming at it from a different angle, and I think it's kind of a quite a fresh approach. We're not thinking what's going to be slamming on, on a kind of a dance floor. It's actually, well, we, you and I love electronic music and it's in embracing that. 
but just in a, in a different kind of format. And I think that's what just, it's, it's just, it's coming to similar results, but just from a totally different angle. So I think it's got a real wide appeal. I think one of the key appeals of this is for people who are more orchestrally inclined, who don't really have the synth chops, because there's so many patches and stuff. You can get right in there, you can be bang on the zeitgeist. And the GUI is so kind of, it's not like running an analog synth where you, you know, that thing where you like turn a knob and suddenly there's no sound coming out of the speaker and your speakers yeah. are just going <laughs> like that. It's like it, it all does really fun stuff. And because it's a plugin, you can save your different customizations and all of that kind of stuff. And you can go like super deep as well if you're a real tweak head. But if not, it's just like, well, give it a wiggle and, you know, there's, there's no rules here. So that's one of the appeals, I think. It's for people who are maybe less used to using um, synths. And it is a kind of an out-of-the-box thing as well in the sense of I don't think there's any shame in being a bit of a preset junkie and just yeah. kind of going through until you find something that you like as opposed to trying to work out how to use a GUI until you get the sound that you want. It's yeah. more found a, a sound that's close and then give it a little tweak. And that's one of the improvements, actually, that we've made, is to recategorize the sound. Yes. So you simply look within any one of the categories, Atmos, keys, leads, synths. It's a cinematic engine. It's a cinematic sound synth. But, it, but having the, the depth of the fact that the source raw sounds that have been used to build it are recorded in these yeah. beautiful studios it gives it a kind of sonic depth as well that I think would appeal to um, all kinds of other music makers outside of our, you know, yeah. outside of our, our kind of core field. And I think the key thing is, you know, I mentioned the zeitgeist. It's a sense of like the spirit of the day, but it's not us trying to be on trend. These things date so, so quickly. And I think just kind of going, this just sounds great. It's inspiring, but you can work it into your music. There aren't like, you know, it's not every note has a fifth in it or is, is too, it's too kind of, has too big a sustain, all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah no, I think it's successful in that respect. And we haven't tried to follow anything in, we haven't gone, oh, let's make something like X synth. So it is, it's that thing of using, a quite, you know, applying our kind of cinematic sensibilities to a synthesizer. So it is, I mean, a lot of this stuff is absolutely epic. Yeah. But, but also we've had, had, had some, some fun, you know, for your slightly more kind of edgy work. That's what happens when you put a tuba through a distortion box. <laughs> It's just silly, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we called it EDNA partly because it's just great having a massive state-of-the-art orchestral synth called Edna, but also because you know I think it implies that the, the, the DNA is our orchestral kind of IP used to create something electronic sounding. Now, this kind of ties in with our work with BT, with Phobos. Yes. It's a similarity of approach. Where our approach with this sound set was, we said, OK, how can we take these orchestral sounds and make a synth out of them? Mm -hmm. BT has taken his approach into how can I create a really interesting synth using something that people wouldn't use to make a synth convolution and using it in this really interesting way and having all of these different controls in a similar way that, that we've done with the UI here. But I think that the benefit of both of these packages, both of these tools, is that you are able to create unique sounds with them. Creating sounds with Phobos, um, you know, I remember when I started sound designing with it, I was making sounds that I had never heard before. Yeah. And this is very, very similar in that it's rare that, that you would create a synth patch out of, you know, some oboes and a trombone or something like that recorded in a, you know, studio that's mm -hmm. frighteningly expensive to hire. It's just not done. People don't do that. They wouldn't no. do that. So you've got sounds that are really unique and kind of fresh. And I think that um, those are the, th the things that really tie in and complement each other uh, incredibly well. Yeah, absolutely. And with this example, I recall is made from a tuba, but it's not recognisable as such. Yes, yes. Whereas, you know, we've got the full kind of spectrum all the way to that first sound that we played, the strings, which is like, oh, I can hear the source of that. So it's an interesting mixture in that respect. There's some really amazing sounds in there from the marimba and from pizzicato and colenio strings, yep. where you can kind of, you can hear and feel the, the source, but it just still sounds kind of otherworldly. 
I mean, I love the rabbit hole of getting lost in the GUI, but I also, you know, in the heat of the moment when you're, you're I don't know, maybe pitching for something where you just want to call something up, having this wealth of patches just to flick through is, you know, it's very useful, I find. Yeah. And as I said, I'll be making a new cartridge and talking about that over the forthcoming weeks. Keep an eye on our socials and this channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, worth doing, to check out when this arrives. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you want to find out more about eDNA Earth, click on the links below. See you next time.